We will be continuing our instruction on the save as function of Word 2016, which we began in the previous lesson. Let's continue in this segment by starting Word and opening the exercise we created in the previous segment. The document we saved in the Word 2016 exercises folder we created in the documents library. The document we saved entitled Word Training Exercise 2. I click on the Word 2016 icon and get the Word opening document screen. Although our document might be in the Recent Files panel on the left, we are going to use the Open Other Document option at the bottom of the Recent Files pane here on the left. I use the Browse window to locate our document in the folder we saved it in, as I'm doing here. By clicking on Open Other Documents and then the Browse icon on the right panel in the left pane here at the bottom, I get the Browse window. And as you learned in the previous lesson, I navigate to our Word 2016 Training Exercises folder we created by first clicking on the Documents folder under Libraries and then double clicking on the Word 2016 Training Exercises folder which gives me a list of files in that folder and as you see our document Word Training Exercise 2 is listed. I will double click on it and it is now open in the Word Document Editing environment in the text area. Okay, now we are ready to learn further about the Save As function and how easy it is to use it to save our document in a variety of document formats that Word supports. Using the option just below where we name our document in the file name box by selecting from the drop down menu a file type from the Save As Type option in the browse window before we click the Save button, thereby instructing Word what format we want our document to be saved as. In most cases, we want a document to be portable for another application or environment when we use this Save As Type option. So right now, let's return to the File tab to the Backstage view and select the Save As function as I'm doing here. Select the Browse option and when I do this, I get our already saved document in the Save As Browse window to use the Save As function where we can now do several things. First we will save our document under a different name, thus making a copy of it so we can revise the copy without affecting the original, often called dupe and revise, duplicate and revise, or copy and edit in professional word processing circles. Accomplishing this is very simple. We just type in the new name of the document before clicking save and our original will be kept as it was saved originally and a copy of the document under a new name will be created. So let's do this now. Let's type in the name Word Training Exercise 3 and click Save. Now you see we are now back in the Word environment. And the original document we had saved is no longer in the text area, but the document we just saved it as is in the text area. The document Word Training Exercise 3 is in the text area. As you can see by the name above here in the title bar area. We have duplicated Word Training Exercise 2. We can now revise this document currently in the text area, a copy called Word Training Exercise 3, adding and deleting text, etc., and always have a version of the original untouched, the original being Word Training Exercise 2. Now, Another thing we can do with the Save As function. Let's go back to the Save As Browse window. We click on the File tab, we get the Backstage view, then select the Save As function. We then click on the folder icon where it says Browse. We now have our document in the Browse window. This time we are going to save it, not in our Word 2016 Training Exercise folder location. We are going to navigate and save it directly in the Documents folder. So why does I navigate to the library's document folder instead of the new folder we created inside of the library's document folder? I click on the left pane of the browse window on libraries. Then I click on documents. I get the listing for documents. And now I'll save our exercise here. This time I'm going to save it under a different name. I'm going to save it under the name Word Training Exercise 4. So why does I type in Word Training Exercise 4 in the file name box? And before I click Save, I want you to take note of the option just below 
the file name box where it says save as type. Here is where we get to instruct Word in what file type we want our document to be saved as if it is to be other than Word's normal docx format. To see the file types we can save a file as, we just click the down pointing arrowhead all the way to the right of the Save As Type box to get the drop down menu, listing the available options. So, I click the down pointing arrow all the way to the right of the Save As Type box, and here you have the options for file types you can save a Word document as. You see that you have several different Word type options to save a document as, primarily, those of template or macro enabled document as well as older versions of word formats. You also see that you have other options such as web page or web file. You have rich format, plain text, XPS, PDF and others. Each of these file formats have their purposes, applications and environments where their formats are used. Word can open many of these file types as well as save a document created in Word in each of these file types listed. So, for our exercise 4, we will select the file type PDF and save the document currently in the text area. PDF stands for Portable Data File Format. PDF is a very widely used file format that is used across platforms and applications and Word can not only read PDF files, but it can also save Word documents in PDF format. So other programs can then read the Word document saved in PDF. So, as we have typed in the file name Word Training Exercise 4, let's add to that file name at the end, in parenthesis, PDF, as I'm doing here. So we know that this file is saved in PDF. Then click Save, as I'm doing here. So, I click on the file name and change the file name to Word Training Exercise 4, parenthesis, in PDF. I'm making sure I select PDF in the Save as Type option box and click Save. When we use the Save as Type option and the type is other than a Word type, we may get a dialog box or screen display in the process of saving the Word document as certain file types. For instance, here upon saving a file type PDF, I get Adobe Reader on the screen. Afterward, it has already saved our document in PDF format, giving me the options to use its program to export, convert, or send the PDF Word has saved. In our next example, we will see again that as we use the Save As Type feature, we can expect interactions with dialog boxes or programs in the process most of which we will only use the defaults requiring very little interaction. So since in this case we don't want to use Adobe's program for anything, we can just close it. And we do this by clicking the close icon in the Windows control area in the program, just as in Word, as you see here. And we are returned to the Word document editing environment. Now, our document has been saved in PDF format in the folder we selected and we are returned to the Word document editing environment. However, if you will take note, our original document is still in our text area and not the document we saved using the save as type function. Let's verify now that our document in the current text area has been saved as a PDF in the location we specified now by going to the file tab and using the open option to browse to the folder location we saved the PDF in as I'm doing here. And as I navigate as you see, to the location we saved our PDF. You see in the browse window of the open function, our PDF listed with the icon adjacent to it indicating that it is a PDF file. I'll double click on the file now and open it. And I want you to take note of how Word responds when we open a document that is not a Word type but a PDF. You see that we get a prompt from Word when we double click to open the file telling us that the file will be converted to Word format and optimized for editing, asking us to confirm. We click on Yes, and the PDF we just saved our Word document as is now converted to a Word editable format and opened in the document text area. So, we can save in a variety of formats supported by Word.
by using the save as function as I have shown you here. Often, documents are requested in XPS or Windows print server format, which saves the Word document as a print file in a way such as it were actually printed on a printer, but only to a file. The resulting file is most often used to transfer printable copies of the document and not for editing or data manipulation purposes. Another commonly requested format is the plain text format, which strips the document of all codes, including formatting, with the exception of tabs and end-of-line return characters, and retains only the text, leaving the data in the file clean and clear of codes for use with other programs and in other environments. Now, there is a dialog box that you should be familiar with that Word will display if you try to use the Save As function and the file name you attempt to use to save a document in the browse window is an already existing file name in the location you are attempting to save the document. I will demonstrate. Let's create a new blank document by going to the file menu as I'm doing here and selecting the new function then the blank icon. I now have a blank doc. Watch as I try to save our document in the library under Documents in the new folder we created, Word 2016 Training Exercises, with the name we have already given to a document, Word Training Exercise 2. I go to the File tab, select the Save As function. On the right panel, on the left pane, I select the Browse option where the folder icon is. You see I get the Save As Browse window. I navigate to the folder Library, then Documents. Word 2016 Training Exercises. Then I type in the file name area, Word Training Exercise 2. And here you see, as I click Save, Word displays a dialog box informing me that a document with this name already exists at this location. Word is alerting me that the file name is the file name of an already existing document and asking me if I still want to save the document in the current text area under this name in this location replacing the existing file, or if I want to save the file currently in the text area under a different name, or if I want to merge the changes to the file. At this point, you have the option to replace the existing file with the contents in the text area, overriding the existing file, or you can select the option to save the document with a different name, saving the contents of the text area into an entirely new document. Lastly, you have an option to merge the changes in the document in the text area with the document named. Merging the changes in the document text area with the document that already exists is usually only done where the document in the text area is a version of the document named needing to be updated with whatever changes were made to the document in the text area. In such case, Word applies the changes of the document in the text area to the document that already exists, thereby merging the changes. Okay, now, before we go on to finish this segment of the course by simulating an abnormal end of the Word program on an unsaved document to instruct you in Word's document recovery features, I want to give you one last demonstration on working with different file types, that of opening a PDF file, saving it as a plain text file, and then reopening that plain text file in Word to give you a hands-on idea of how working with different file types affects a document. Watch as I go to the File tab and open a file using the Browse option to open a PDF download from the web. A manual on cascading style sheets from the web in PDF format I downloaded for reference a while ago. Here you see the file is selected and by looking at the icon adjacent to it you can tell that it is not a Word document type but a PDF file type, and by double-clicking on it, Word lets me know before opening it that I will be opening a PDF file and that it will be converting the file to an editable Word file format. Word tells me also at this point that the file might look slightly different than the original PDF file when it is converted and opened in Word, particularly if it contains a great deal of graphics and is prompting me at this point to continue with the process of opening the PDF and that it may take a little while. By clicking yes, you see that Word is beginning to open the PDF file. As you can see, this is a large document 
a 200 plus page document. You can see where it knows it is a PDF file and that it can read it, but first you can see it is converting it from PDF format into a Word format so it can be read by Word and edited in its environment. Okay, Word has converted the file to a form that can be read. And now I can page through it, edit it, view it, reformat it, and print it using Word, although it by origin was a PDF file. After editing or reformatting the file, of course, you know I have the option to resave it as a PDF file by selecting the Save As Type option, PDF. By default, when Save or Save As is selected, Word will pre-select saving it in Word's document format type, or DOCX format. Before I exercise, let's save it now as a plain text file, as I said we would, so that we can then open the plain text file in Word to see how differently it looks in Word afterwards and to instruct you through that process. So, before we save the PDF manual we just opened in plain text format, take a good look at how it looks and all the formatting that Word retained when opening it from PDF, so you will be able to take note of the effects on the formatting when saving as plain text only. To save our PDF, which we just opened in Word in plain text format. We click on the File tab, then select the Save As function, and then on the right panel on the left pane, we select the Browse option and get, as you see here, a Browse window. Let's navigate to our newly created folder to save in, as I'm doing here. Then I name the file Word Training Exercise 5 plain text. I place in the file name in parentheses plain text so that when I see the file name I immediately know it is a plain text format document type, although the icon and file extension associated with it will also indicate that. I type in the file name as you see here and then click on the down pointing arrowhead in the save as type box area and I get the drop down listing the types I can save a file as. I select the .txt type or the plain text file type by clicking on plain text. Then I click on save. When saving a document as plain text type, as I informed you earlier, Word will prompt you with a dialog box asking about the type of plain text encoding to use. There are several depending on the application and region, however we usually use the Windows default. So I click on OK using the Windows default. Word then tells me that I may lose certain formatting with my selection and give me the option to cancel and select a format that may retain the formatting. I will continue on with saving our exercise as plain text by clicking on Yes indicating we want to continue. Our PDF is now saved in plain text format in the location we selected with the name we gave it. We are now back in the Word document editing environment and as you can see in the title bar area our document type .txt indicating plain text. What we see on the screen presently however is the document displayed as we opened it in Word from PDF format. So we don't actually see the way it actually looks now as a plain text file. Let's close the document we currently have in the text area and open the text document we just saved and take a look to see the differences. We click on the File tab and select Close. Our document is closed and we are returned to the Word document editing environment with a document which we had opened earlier but hadn't closed. Let's go to the File tab now and select Open and we see that on the right panel, among the recent documents opened, we have at the top the last document we saved, Word Training Exercise 5, plain text.txt. Let's click on it and Word prompts us with a dialog box asking us what type of encoding should it use to read our text document. And again, although there are several different encodings, depending on region and application, we will use the Windows default 
which we always use unless otherwise specified. And we continue opening the plain text document we saved, our heavily formatted PDF document, by clicking OK. Our text version of the document is now opened in the text area. Now take a good look. Notice the difference as I use the scroll bar to scan through the document. As I scroll through the text version of the document, you can see that it has been stripped of all codes and formatting, including any graphic images or colors, etc., which it had as when it was first opened as a PDF. So, you see some of what's involved with working with different file types. One note concerning maintaining some of the formatting in your text convergence of documents is to use the rich format as file save as type. It converts to text but maintains some basic formatting, underlining, bold, italics, etc. We have covered all of the opening, creating, saving, and working with files aspects of the course at this point. And all that is left to know concerning files is how we recover files in the event of unforeseen events or circumstances, which is the final topic in this section of working with files. Continue on with us as we conclude this section with this topic in the next lesson. And then, from there, we will begin to learn about how to do the things we do to a file that we do in the file, in the document editing environment, now that you have a good foundation of the things we do to a file that we don't do in the file, as we have learned by using the Backstage view of the File tab. This concludes this segment of the course.